Hi everyone, it's Susan Thornton, the CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, and welcome to number three in our video series uh, discussing CAR T therapy in cutaneous lymphomas. And today I have Dr. P.K. Morrow joining me from CRISPR Therapeutics. Dr. Morrow is the Chief Medical Officer, and welcome to our conversation today, Dr. Morrow. Awesome. Thank you so much, Susan. I'm really delighted to meet with you, the, the foundation, and discuss CRISPR therapeutics. Yeah. So just to get started, in case someone is tuning in for the first time and didn't watch the other two videos, perhaps you can just let us know a little bit about CRISPR therapeutics and who you are and what you're up to. Absolutely. Thanks, Susan. So CRISPR Therapeutics is a biopharmaceutical company, and we're really focused on creating transformative gene-based therapies for serious diseases. And we use this proprietary CRISPR-Cas9 platform, which is a revolutionary gene editing technology that allows for precise, very directed changes to genomic DNA. Our company has established a portfolio of therapeutic programs across a broad range of diseases, which include oncology, hemoglobinopathies, regenerative medicine, as well as rare diseases. All of our therapies are currently investigational and are currently being studied in clinical trials, which means that the therapies that CRISPR Therapeutics is investigating are not approved by the FDA or any other country's health authority at this stage, and safety and efficacy have not been fully established. Great, thank you for sharing a little bit about what you're up to at CRISPR Therapeutics. And today we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the specific clinical trial that you have going on in CAR T cell therapy in the T cell arena. Uh, and for those of you who may not have seen the previous two videos, which talk a little more in more detail about the CRISPR Cas9 and the CAR T cell therapy in itself, I recommend you go back and watch those because it'll give you a sense of what this technology is bringing to the table. So today, Dr. Morrow, can you share a little bit about, um, maybe set the stage for clinical trials and where this particular clinical trial is in the process as far as um, the stage, and then we can talk a little bit about the clinical trial itself. Absolutely. So a lot of times we look at clinical trials in phases, phase one, through ultimately even to phase four. So phase one starts in establishing the safety as well as the dose of the therapy within humans. Phase two and phase three begin to confirm the efficacy of the agent, continue to evaluate the safety, as well as determine whether this agent could be an, another option to standard therapy in the patient's armamentarium. The traditional drug, and finally, I would mention also that the phase four is oftentimes a post-marketing study. So the traditional drug development process can take five to 10 years as multiple phases of clinical trials have typically been conducted because of the urgent and continuous need for new and better treatments for cancers, more recent cancer therapies, such as CAR-T therapies, have followed a more accelerated development process with the goal of bringing new and safe therapies to cancer patients earlier. Great, thank you. And we have more information about clinical trials and the process and so forth on our website, clfoundation.org, if you wanna learn a little bit more about how the process works. And you can also, as I mentioned, learn more about CAR T therapy itself in our previous video. So go back and look at our, our YouTube channel there. But let's talk a little bit about this specific clinical trial that you are hosting at CRISPR Therapeutics. Can you share a little bit about that and um, perhaps explain again a little bit more about uh, CAR T therapy and allogeneic versus autogolous and, and where this fits in. Sure, I can start with talking a little bit, as you alluded to, about our current clinical trial, which is the cobalt limb, standing for lymphoma trial, and it's studying CTX-130. So CTX-130 is an investigational allogeneic CAR-T therapy that's designed to target 
a protein called CD70, and the safety of and efficacy of CTX130 has not yet been established. So CD70 is a cell surface protein that's expressed on some cancer cells. It's commonly expressed in a type of kidney cancer and certain types of lymphoma and leukemia, including T-cell lymphoma. This is a phase one study and it's investigating safety and early signs of efficacy. And we're currently enrolling patients re with relapse and or refractory T and B cell patient, lymphoma patients who have received two or greater prior therapies. Our key endpoints are safety and pharmacokinetics, which is how the drug expands and is effective within the body. Now, I'd like to walk you through if potentially, you know, how allogeneic versus autologous CAR T therapy works. So, Walking through this, allogeneic CAR T's can be manufactured and processed at any time, and they can be frozen and stored. And this allows for greater flexibility in their use for targeted cancer. So in CAR T cell therapy, and for specific allogeneic CAR T cell therapy, T cells are taken from the healthy donors, and then they're modified to express chimeric antigen receptors, or CARs. And those act like a key, which is in search of a lock. The lock is a specific protein that matches it on the surface of the cancer cell. So as I noted, the receptor really acts like this key. And it's search of the lock. And once it engages with the lock, the CAR T can then act upon the cancer cell. In allogeneic CAR T therapies, as I alluded to, those cells are therefore taken from healthy cells, or they are healthy cells from donors. Whereas in autologous CAR T therapy, the patient cells have been potentially treated with chemotherapy and or radiotherapy. So after screening and approval, you can note that the patient wait time is anticipated to be approximately one to two weeks before start of an allogeneic CAR T therapy as opposed to an autologous CAR T therapy in which the wait time can be four to six weeks. Great, thank you. I think that's very helpful, particularly for our patient community. Obviously, it's our T cells that are impacted with the cancer. So having an alternative using this new CAR T technology and using donor cells versus the patient cells is really a step forward and enables um, the therapy to be used in treating uh, cutaneous T cell lymphomas, which is very, very exciting. Even though I know it's still early on in the game, the fact that there is this option that's coming down the pike, I think, um, gives a lot of folks hope for the future. So what are the next steps in the process and when can we expect to see some results from um, the current phase one clinical trial? Absolutely. So we did recently in 2022 release data at EHA, which is the European Hematology Association, as well as at EORTC, which is the European Organization for Research and Treatment. And we're really looking forward to providing another update as the cobalt limb or lymphoma data continues to mature. That's great. So we'll be keeping an eye on that. And for everyone in our audience, know that we'll be able to bring you an update um, when data is available so we can let you know what's happening. So if someone's interested in learning a little bit more about this particular trial, uh, where can they find some more information? Yeah, so this trial, the Cobalt Limb trial, is being conducted at multiple sites across the United States, Canada, and Australia. And so if you're interested in learning more, your doctor can help contact a study center to see if you're eligible for a screening appointment. You can also find the study on clinicaltrials.gov and learn more on our website, crispertx.com. Yes, and I'll also say we are... Um communicating regularly with the team at CRISPR Therapeutics to keep the clinical trials updated on our website too. So on the treatment center uh, listings, you'll be able to see where this trial is being hosted. So perhaps there's somewhere close to you. But again, always check in with your doctor and see if this is an appropriate um, option. So thank you, Dr. Morrow. It's very exciting. I think new technology, this is 
brand new ways of treating cancer in general. And it's exciting, at least from my perspective and hopefully on behalf of our community, that this new technology is going hopefully to be coming to our to our disease as a new therapeutic down the road. So thank you for sharing about the trial and a little bit more about how this particular iteration of CAR-T is working and we'll stay on top of the data as you get it and look forward to more updates as things become available. So thanks so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time and uh, we'll stay tuned for more as the trial rolls along. Thank you so much, Susan. It's really been a delight to engage with you, the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation, as well as the Cutaneous Lymphoma community on this important initiative. Thanks so much. Have a great day, everyone.